All right, so today's video is all about how and more importantly, why I became a personal trainer. My approach to exercise, um, I'm going to lay down some philosophies, my views, my thoughts, um, how I got here, and again, yeah, why I chose this path. Um, it all started basically in my own quest for self betterment when I was a young teen. I believe, actually, even preteen, I was, I was about 12 years old when I started working out. But not really knowing much, I just started doing some push ups and some sit ups. And anybody who went to secondary school in Trinidad knows our school bags weighed a ton. So I used to grab a school bag and do a sort of one arm upright row. Um, I'll, I think I'll curl it even. So I'll do that every night before bed, thinking I was getting big and strong, but yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. But going to martial arts around that same time, I was probably about 13 years old, and I went to bandu kickboxing, which was a great exercise in itself. Also, martial arts teaches you a lot of discipline, um, a lot of great information as well, and, and I think it's always good for anybody to learn some martial arts techniques. Uh, Bandu kickboxing was a great one to start with, I found. Uh, learned some good striking, some good sweeps, and some trips, um, throws. But I remember I, I really got into it. The problem was, is that about maybe six months into a year into it, I got braces. And I just kept busting up my lips and my braces, the brackets would break. And obviously my mother paying for the braces was not a fan of this sport. So I, I pushed her remain in the classes until one day my lip got caught in one of the braces and it was the worst um, busted lip I got. And I was just like, I'm gonna stop until I get the braces removed, you know? So the, the, the kickboxing classes, or, uh, it, it got me into a, a better way of training. So I started doing the same workouts in the night before bed. Um, I think my push-ups got a little bit better, a little bit better form because I was actually learning from, from people who knew more than I did. So I'll do the push-ups, I'll do the sit-ups. And at this point, I got my hands on some 10 pound dumbbells that my mom had lying around. And I remember just doing like high reps, just a lot of curls. And my brother told me I need to work on my triceps. So I got the one, I used to pin them together behind the head and usually get that tricep exercise right now. The name isn't ringing a bell or because I think that exercise is absolute shit. I know a lot of people would disagree. I just don't like it. Uh, I think there's way better ways to work your tricep. But anyway, I was young, messed around with it. And yeah, up until 15 years old, I wasn't, I, I looked, I looked the part, I looked pretty ripped, but I wasn't putting on any size, in part, obviously, because I'm growing at that age. Uh, but I was liking the attention I was getting. Um, you know, the ego gets fed, you know, when, when your friend's on, you know, you, you're looking, you're looking ripped, and then obviously you get attention from, um, well, I would say the opposite sex, but for some people, it's whatever your sexual preference is, if you get any attention. That also is a big motivator as well. So I wanted to get bigger. And at 15 years old, I entered the gym for the first time. And I remember starting off, like the first couple of weeks, I was letting myself be taught. There, there, there was a, a good gym trainer who managed the gym. And he was trying to lead my friends and I along a, a good path to developing uh, muscle and gaining strength and, and doing it the right way. Um, we were doing warm-ups, uh, we were learning proper lifting um, technique. Uh, we had a program and also we had uh, stuff to do at the end to recover, help recover, little stretches and whatnot. And all sounded good, all sounds good now because that's how I train now, but at the time, I just I just thought that this, this man was was killing my vibe, you know? I just wanted to go and get big. And I used to look at the big guys in the gym, 
Obviously not knowing what I know now, but a lot of the big jack guys just lifting heavyweights and they were doing any of the right things. And their lifts, I mean, look like shit, but to me, they're lifting the weight, so that's what you're supposed to do. You know, I have to get bigger and stronger. So I did the same thing. I don't want to say the guy's name just in case, but um, we gave him such a hard time because he was trying to, he was trying to help us. But I think he just used to shake his head sometimes and say, look at these punks, because I would actually, at all costs, avoid him to go and do my own thing. Because I just want to lift heavy, you're disturbing my my process. And yeah, I'll just go to the gym, see what the big guy's doing, say, right, so you're bench pressing today, I'm going to bench press too. And 15 years old, still developing frame, and I'm pushing weights that my scrawny ass shouldn't have been pushing. And I time it in right, know the importance of diet as well. So I was doing a lot of damage to my body. <clears throat> I didn't help as well that at that time at 15, um, I was mourning the loss of my father. My father died when I was 14 years old. And after that happened, I I mean, it kind of goes to show you, you can kind of see the, the behavioral pattern. I was rebellious. So, you know, I was rebelling against a guy who was trying to help me out. So at the same time I'm trying to get big and strong and jacked and and look all tough and, and, and cool and whatnot. At the same time I'm smoking a lot of cigarettes and I'm drinking a lot and I'm smoking marijuana as well. And not really being a, a productive member of society. I was just I, I was a punk. And I, I believed because I went through this pain that the world owed me something, so God owed me something, <laughs> so I could do whatever I want. And I know, I don't know how ridiculous that is, but at the time that was my thought process. So I just did whatever I wanted. And from 15 to 16, I really pushed it hard. I really pushed it hard in the gym. But it was one point where it was almost a, exactly a year after my dad died one of my best friends died who was like an older brother to me in a car accident that I was actually planning to sneak out to go and party with him. Uh, a lot of my friends were going to the same party that night, even my siblings. But um, my, my girlfriend at the time begged me not to go and she kept nagging me and thankfully I didn't go. So after he died, I mean, I just made me even more rebellious, um, more of a punk. That's the, that's the only word that really comes to mind. I was really, really was a little punk back then. And yeah, I just kept um, doing the wrong thing. And around that time at 16, I, I, I started going to different gyms and there was, a, there was another gym on the island I was going to where another trainer, the top trainer in the gym, like he would see me doing the wrong thing and he would come and he would, and he would try to help me. He would, he would try and speak some words of wisdom and, and he did it so nicely, he did it very respectfully. Um, he was less aggressive than the, the previous one I talked about, the previous trainer I talked about. And I, I really liked the guy and I really understood that he was trying to help me. But again, I wanted to do my own thing. So it comes full circle back to him eventually because he ended up becoming a, a, a mentor of mine and a great teacher as well. So I used to try and avoid him as well. <laughs> Anytime he was around, I was, I, I would try and get past him and, and again, do my own thing because I knew better. Yeah. I just wanted to get big and he, and he was, he was, he was, um, being a hater or whatever I thought. I don't, I don't even really know. So, yeah, I was in and out of the gym because I thought that I had reached a stage where I was I was pretty big for that age and I was getting the attention and I didn't really even know about maintaining or anything like that. So my workout was pretty pathetic after that. And then I was about uh, 17, 18 years old, I remember. It became a choice between money money for partying or money for gym membership and i decided that money for partying was more important so 
invested in some some free weights, a couple of dumbbells, a barbell, one of those shitty old bench press machines. Everything everybody has used them at some point. Those rickety tiny little ones. You have this little narrow grip. I don't know how I, I don't even know if people still use that shit, but anyway. Um yeah, got got me that. And for a while, like I would say from that age, 17, 18, till my early 20s, just used to do garage workouts. And it wasn't the most healthy ways or healthy approaches to training, but it was actually enjoyable because I had a couple of friends who were strong, well, stronger than me, bigger and stronger than me, that used to tr come and train. So that used to really motivate me. And we used to have a good dynamic going. And uh, on days when they wouldn't train, I i mean, I would, I would admit it. But with one of my training partners, we would. But how I'd normally train is I would, I would smoke a little bit of, of weed. And then I would just be bare back in the garage with the weights and playing my music. And, you know, in, in, in hindsight, it, was, it did have some positives some positives to it but yeah it was just the type of workouts I was doing and the the preparation and the recovery process it, it wasn't there it was lacking but the memories of those training sessions were great you know like it was me getting into a zone and and it was like what I still believe up to this day and it it's still very embedded in me of, of like that time when you're training is, is, is so personal and it's such a rewarding time and it's um and it, it it hasn't left me like every time I train like that I still get that same feeling of accomplishment and and um and like you know you've, you've overcome a barrier basically so after yeah when I was about 22 23 I got into a serious car accident where I, I drove off, uh, anybody who knows Trinidad, I drove off the cliff in Maracas. Miracle I survived, but I didn't come out unscathed. I, my, my whole left side, I never got diagnosed right properly, but my whole left side just really wasn't moving around too much. I don't know why I just did that gesture, but um, yeah, um, my left side was compromised. I had a really bad concussion. I had to check myself out of the hospital. It was my first time at the general hospital, which would be the first of many trips to the general hospital here. I'm sure all the doctors, any of them see this, they know me pretty pretty well, too well probably. And yeah, so um, I was there overnight, full of blood and battered and um, concussed. And at the time, the facilities right weren't the best. so. I remember walking out there looking like a 28 days later zombie that, from that movie, I don't know if you all know it. But I'm walking outside just full of blood and bareback just in my board shorts and my friends came to visit me and I'm like, what the fuck is going on there? So yeah, um, they took me home, I just I basically just exited on, on my own. Um, I was down for a few months and then my family moved to Barbados, I moved across there. And from there, from Barbados, um, I didn't come back to Trinidad for about five years. I traveled around in between. I traveled to different. I, I, I lived in Anguilla for a little while. Some people don't understand. When I say Anguilla, some people think Angola, but it's my accent. It's Anguilla. I, I don't know how the American or you or the British pronunciation really is, but um, I lived in New Jersey for a little while. So, but all that, all that time, like, I, I wasn't in a gym for, so for about, yeah, about, about five, six years. Well, I didn't have any gym equipment, I should say. So for about five, six years, I was just training body weight, more push-ups, pull-ups, um, a lot of running, that kind of thing. But again, uh, no real structure to it. And I'll come to find out that my push-ups, push-ups I've been doing all the time, were absolute rubbish. Because when I came back to Trinidad, I, I started back the gym. And at the same time when I started back the gym, I started back martial arts. I started back, well, no, I, I started Krav Maga. And 
I really love the philosophies behind it. I love um, the the mental part of it, along with the physical training. I really enjoy the physical training as well. And I was training with the crab for about three to six months until I found out that an old friend of mine was starting up a mixed martial arts gym. And he had had some mixed martial arts fights. Um, he came together with a guy who had um, collegiate wrestling experience. He was a basically a local celebrity. He was a great MMA fighter. Um, fought in different parts of the world as well. Uh, they formed uh, a MMA gym called Rough House. And anybody interested in that will know that name. Uh, Rough House really... I, it, 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 MMA training changed me in a lot of ways. It was a great way to face your demons and to overcome fear. And I always love the sport of MMA. Training in, in it, getting your ass beat and humbled a few times, definitely, um, yeah, definitely puts things in perspective and also humbles you in a lot of ways that you may not know that you needed to be humbled in. So, trained in that gym for about two and a half years. There was a one point I, I had to come out of it for about three to six months, somewhere around then, because of an injury. But that's when I really started to learn more about, about physical training. Was that when I, while I was doing the rehab, I said it comes full circle to the guy who I mentioned who became a mentor. I did physical rehabilitation on his shoulder with a physiotherapist. And after I did the physio, I was nervous to get back in the gym and re-injure the, the, the joint. So I remember going to the traditional gym, or the commercial gym, I should say, and seeing the, the, the trainer there, the head trainer, and say, tell him what happened and whatnot. And he told me, he was like, let me help you, you know? So he was just doing it his own free will for a little while. And then I said, you know what, let me pay you and let me hire you to really bring me back. I want to be better than I was before. Because there was an old injury that happened 10 years before I never got treated. I should have mentioned that. It happened during a rescue diver course I did when I was 18 years old. And then 10 years later, during, doing martial arts. So he bridged the gap from, um, from physiotherapy to getting back into a really peak shape again. And he strengthened everything, he, he broke down everything. And this is where I learned that for all these years, I, I was doing push-ups the wrong way, I was doing pull-ups the wrong way. Um, he started like teaching me um, really great practices and, and how to warm up properly, how to sequence your exercises, um, how to recover the proper way to stretch and whatnot. I learned that in physio as well, but like, he just reinstilled that into me. So eventually I got back into MMA and I felt better than ever. And MMA was going really good. Um, I was riding really high. I was feeling really good on, on the MMA and um, was even talking about doing a fight. And I was with a guy during his fight camp and thinking, yeah, man, you know, like this is kind of a bucket list thing for me. So that all halted with a, with a massive tractor tire that fell on my left leg and snapped it in two. It was less than a month after Anderson Silva snapped his leg in two. It was the same left leg. My tibia and fibula just full break. I got the same surgery, the same long, that was one of my visits to the hospital I was talking about. So I got the same uh, titanium rod going down the whole tibia or the shin bone and a bunch of screws to keep it in place. And coming out of that was the most humbling thing, is I had to learn how to walk again. And the therapy that I got after that is what really set the precedent for me becoming a trainer. It, it started, because I had to start all over again. I started learning about 
the mid the importance of the of, of working in major muscle groups but also the the smaller muscle groups and started weeding out all the stuff that I was doing before that really made absolutely no sense because the I don't have to call my therapist because she says she's not a physiotherapist but um, an active release therapist probably should have confirmed that before I made this video but but she basically told me um, a lot of stuff that they do out there is, is, does more harm than, than it actually benefits you so in, in, in coming back from that injury and then what I learned from the shoulder injury so I've now had to rehab and rebuild the upper and lower body and all the information decided to come together and then yeah, when I was back in the in the gym this time I was back in the commercial gym because I decided to give MMA a rest I ended up becoming friends with I would say another mentor who helped me go from being back in the gym to becoming even better at strength training and he introduced me to the course training for warriors and the training for warriors course I love the philosophies in the course itself because they basically were along the same they were in line with my thought at that time of and then they, and, they, and they, they brought more educated data data to um, the arguments that I had towards some of these training practices that you see that are highly popularized in the fitness industry. So it, it, it just put me on the right track to, to figure this out, you know. And from all the information I've learned from all these people, from the mentors and from the, the, the training program, from the rehabilitation, and also an old Chinese lady who was doing acupuncture and doing some massage therapy on me as well later on. Um, she gave me some some key movements to do uh, while you warm up to relieve the, the groin area and the hip flexors and um, what the adductors sound better. So I, I started piecing these things together and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's time to do this, you know. Because people, are see, friends of mine kept asking to, to train with me. And as I said earlier, like my training time became so much of my own Zen time. Like after work, I just want to go to the gym, put my headphones in, and I don't want to hear or see anybody. I just want to do the movements. I know it's going to sound a little much, but I really love getting into that zone and just like actually feeling the movements and, and being present with the workouts, you know. Um, I know most people aren't there like working out so it seems to be a bit of a chore but that's a part of my job as well is to get people to enjoy it and understand what they're doing why are we doing these exercises why are we doing these sequences why are we train the way we train because my approach is a bit different so I don't do the bro splits that's well bro splits is the best way to put it the, the day they separate the body parts um, definitely not into any CrossFit style workouts. Uh, I do not believe in doing those heavy compound lifts for time and speed. I just don't think it's practical. I don't think it's good on your on your body at, at all. And the evidence is all out there. Everybody I know who's done CrossFit for a period of time has some injury. But if it is that you like CrossFit, you love it, and you want to compete in it, you love the community, I'm not here to try and stop you from doing CrossFit but be cautious when you do it um, so I think in my my brand or I know sorry my brand is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a mix and a combination of all of it there's some elements of power powerlifting there's some elements of bodybuilding um, the conditioning practices are influenced from martial arts as well and from sports and from how I warm up myself and my clients, we do a dynamic warm up. We do full body training, whether it's a strength day or a cardio day, a metabolic day, whichever day, we always work the full body. 
I, I, I just, it's something I never enjoyed even when I was young and I, and I wasn't even aware. But the thought of coming and just working chest or, or, or chest and back, upper body, and then leaving the gym, I, my, I used to feel kind of strange in my body is that one part of me is fatigued and, 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 and um, like stress, but like the rest of my body, it, 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 it felt so imbalanced. So when I started putting together full body routines, I just find like I, I leave the gym feeling so much better. And the end of every workout was absolutely as important as the warm up and as the exercise sequences that I put together is the uh, we stretch. We do a full body stretch to recover. So the next day, you're not feeling wiped out. You're not feeling like you're in a car accident or any crap like that. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to end the video here because I realized that I was talking for about 25 minutes and I could go on a lot longer because this is my passion. Uh, if anybody wants to find out any more information, follow me on Instagram at Training Surge and like and subscribe the YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Other than that, I attached a video, a workout video, that I hope you enjoyed. Um, shows how I train at home with resistance bands and body weight. So just start off that up. And yeah, leave your comments down below. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good one.